is the Bingley moored ship, is the seaman's mission chaplain doing his regular job. Often he has mail for the men with him. Always he has the warm, friendly approach of his organization and the welcome offer of hospitality to men who are a long, long way from home. News from home, the last news until the next port. From across the sea comes Australia's oil, petroleum. Tankers bring millions of gallons each year. Petrol for our cars, oil for powerhouses to run the jobs of tens of thousands of Australians. But most of us never think how it gets here. Without merchant shipping, trade would die. Australia would have no cause to grow more wheat or wool, to produce more meat or butter. The man on the land, the worker in industry, the wharf labourer, the clerk, the stenographer, the housewife, all depend on things Australia makes and grows and exports. So cargo ships don't stay long in port. They discharge one cargo and take aboard another until their holes packed tightly, they hoist the Blue Peter and so to sea for a week, two weeks, up to six weeks at a stretch. This is an endless job of long ocean voyages through seas in a variety of moods, a job that goes on in peacetime as well as war. In port, the merchant seamen must prepare their ships for sea. Old paint must be chipped away and new paint applied. The salt water and sea air bites deep into steel plates if they're left unprotected. In the engine room, maintenance continues. A hundred and one repair jobs are done to keep the ships efficient. The duties of the merchant seamen don't end when the ship makes fast alongside its berth. Down below on the galley, the ship's butcher and the cooks prepare meals. The seamen gather at the mess table to eat. A meal aboard, a meal ashore. The merchant seaman rarely sees his home which may be almost anywhere in the British Commonwealth. So the missions to seamen try to provide homes away from home. This is the Victorian Club at Port Melbourne, one of many similar clubs in Australian ports which aims to dispel seamen's loneliness abroad. The missions to seamen, established by the Church of England a century ago, is a demonstration of practical Christianity, doing good unto others. Here are provided comfortable lounges for those who like to relax and writing facilities where the seaman can write to his wife or sweetheart perhaps thousands of miles away. These clubs arrange trips into the Australian countryside for men from overseas ships. The men are of many different nationalities and many different creeds and colours, but creed or race makes no difference when they have the common bond of the Brotherhood of the Sea. It just happens to be a dull, rainy Melbourne Sunday, but they take the trip to the hills just the same, for it's better there in the clean atmosphere of the bush and paddling around the deserted streets of a strange city. And, of course, it isn't always raining. At a roadside stall, they pause to stock up with fresh fruit, and it seems that stories of the sea air producing healthy appetites are no exaggeration. <laughs> After a day in the country, the seamen return to the club where a tea and a dance has been organized for them by women of the Harbour Lights Guild. These clubs offer a variety of entertainments so that sailors in port will not have to walk the streets in strange cities without a friend. The great work of these missions is little known to those who do not know the sea and the men who spend most of their lives upon it. In the missions, wherever they go, they have one sure friend, helping to brighten what otherwise might be lonely lives. After the dance comes supper and time for a yarn. In the club halls, films are shown several nights each week, an opportunity for men who've spent long weeks at sea to catch up with the latest releases. Then there are games tables, where friendly duels are fought over chess and drafts boards. 
There's a well-equipped canteen in every club, efficiently staffed by people who are specially selected for their bright personalities. Here a man can meet his everyday needs, even though the city shops have closed. Snooker and billiards are hardly games that can be played on board a ship in a heavy sea, so the tables are doubly popular with the men when they get ashore. The more athletic types can work off surplus energy in boxing and wrestling matches. This wrestle between two seamen from a British ship has been the main topic of conversation on board for weeks, and all their shipmates and many from other ships want to see the result. Although the missions to seamen were established by the Church of England, the chapels are, of course, open to all creeds. Services are held regularly, and the seamen who attend them know that here is practiced a very practical and sincere type of Christianity. There is an annual seafarer's service in the cathedrals of the capital cities. Into the cathedral are carried the house flags of the shipping lines, which trade to and from Australia. More than 30 lines are represented at this service, and the men who carry the flags have sailed the seven seas, men who know most of the ports in the world. In wartime, they were heroes. We should not forget them now that peace has come. The missions to seamen has not forgotten them. Their clubs in Australia's major ports cost money to maintain. It is not charity, it is a Christian service to men upon whom Australia still depends. Nicholas Montserrat, who himself served in corvettes protecting the convoys of the last war, has this commendation for the mission's drive for funds. There is a mission to seamen in every state where enthusiastic workers give freely of their time. These are Melbourne buildings. And now in Hobart, Tasmania, a new mission building is beginning to rise. But, like everything else, it cannot come to completion without planning, great effort, and money. Merchant seamen made great sacrifices in the war. 30,000 of their fellows gave their lives. They are still making sacrifices in home life and pleasure. You can help them by answering the missions to seamen's urgent appeal for funds. We owe a great debt to the men of the Merchant Marine. We can repay a little of that debt by helping the missions to seamen minister to them now.